Hello there. I am back at the location that I found in my last video during sunrise. And I'm hoping to get something out of this. But I'm not sure. Pretty thick clouds at the horizon. But anyway, I'm gonna set up a composition and hope for the best. So the first thing that I'm considering is whether or not I want to include this closest foreground here or if I should go even further forward here and ignore it and just focus in on this part and have that as a foreground. It's not as powerful in a sense, uh, but it's more wholesome of the scene in a sense. So either using this or stepping back and trying to use this foreground and perhaps or perhaps just using a little bit of it to break it out. I'm actually thinking that ignoring the closest foreground here where I'm standing and the first drop there and just using this because I think it becomes more wholesome of the scene that I'm actually lo actually looking for. Um, yeah, and you can see the sky here. It looks interesting. We have a lot of clouds laying on the horizon there. I can see just a tad bit of color in the sky behind there. And looking at the weather red radar <laughs> from when I looked at it yesterday evening, I could see that it's open beyond those clouds but hopefully that is not that opening is not too far away and i'm gonna be able to get some color out of this and reflected in the lake there which is what i'm looking for really so let's set up something along here so the clock is five Oh, 05 in the morning and the sun rises at uh, 5 30 so I have 24 or 25 minutes left until the sun rises so this area is actually gonna be a lot of trial and error for me I'm probably gonna have to return to this one quite a few times to find the ideal composition since it's sunrise meaning having less time and good light to actually see how where different composition looks or um, where different compositions are the best so i'm having this little thing going out here in the foreground and that is what is going to be the peak interest for uh, for the foreground element and the other thing that i want to try to balance is having this side and that side included i'm not going to be able to do that as you can see right here it's barely barely able to if i get there i'm cutting out a little bit on that side and in a sense this um, foreground element here is leading you not it's not leading you to the correct place it would have been better to point more in towards the middle here uh, since the sun is rising over here on this side there there the peak interest is going to be but According to the foreground, the peak interest should be in the background there. Uh, but I still, I think I'm gonna frame this up and just see how the sunrise progresses and see how the light interacts with everything. It could still be, if the light is blocked a little bit there, it could still be more powerful uh, where the foreground element is actually pointing, uh, which would integrate into a better image as a whole so I'm gonna have to really I'm just gonna have to see how the how the sun and the light progresses during the morning and see if it works with the composition that I've framed up and I'm yeah basically I'm in the hands of of, of the light in a sense <coughs> it's actually pretty chilly now after the hike uh. 
just gonna uh, taking a jacket and some gloves and just try to keep warm. I have a cup of coffee with me as well. Try to enjoy the sunrise as much as possible. Yeah, that is gonna help with the isolation. Oh, this jacket is just wonderful. And then I said I had coffee. There we go. Oh, that's good. Let's enjoy the sunrise. I'm not sure about the light at all. It should start to show now if I'm gonna get any. The ambient light levels are rising quite high, but still no real, oh, no real definition of any colors happening in the clouds. What I'm actually gonna do is try or salvage the sunrise before it even began. And that is to put on a ND filter. The, I can see the clouds are moving uh, this direction and uh, basically streak them out and uh, get interest in that way in the sky. And hopefully that is um, happening in the lake as well. So having similar lines uh, across the lake and the sky. And yeah, as I said, in that way, we're getting interest in both without having the color there. It's still the blue early morning cast, the, the blue color cast from early morning. And uh, that looks really nice on long exposures. Um, so I'm putting on a six stop going with 120 seconds and go. So the sun has risen now, we're still not getting anything. I'm not getting anything. We have some interesting clouds, but there are not clouds that are interesting for wide angle, a grand scene like this. Here I would have liked to have light, but no light appeared. Uh, so one of the long exposure is the best that I'm able to get today. So I'm gonna have to come back another day. So, nothing of any real interesting happened in the clouds. But I did think I found another composition using just the foreground. I didn't film it, but I want to show you the image anyway. So now it's time to head into the forest and see what the forest has to offer for me today.
Seems like a fire has raged through this area at some time. The bottom part of every tree in this area is just purely charcoal. Looks really special. A couple of the trees have actually died, it seems. So I wonder what have happened. My guess is probably that someone has been here, had a fire and it's gone wild. Or it could be lightning as well, of course. But it hasn't spread. That is pretty interesting. Actually, ah, a theory is kind of forming in my head as I'm looking on it right now. It could be perhaps that lightning has struck on this location where I am right now, close, close to the water here. And then uh, it's caught fire and it starts to spread inland. But since this area is so open, it's received a lot of sunlight and dried up the whole area. So the fire caught really easily here, but when it got further into the forest, it must have been wetter in the grounds there and then the fire probably stopped at a certain point because it couldn't get any further in because it was wetter in there since it isn't receiving as much sunlight and it hadn't dried up as much. So that's theory that can form in my head as I'm looking on it right now. Of course, I don't really have any idea what have, what have happened, but it seems plausible as an explanation at least. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> you can see just up there, that is where we were during sunrise on that cliff wall. It's a pretty steep drop actually. Down to the lake, just down here. And then the charcoal trees. It's a very interesting area and really glad I found it last time I was out. I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot of interesting visits here. So I found a composition, not necessarily pure woodlands in a sense, uh, I'm just to, to the right here is the charcoal area that I showed you. Uh, and it's open on that side, so I'm having this nice directional light coming in and showing upon these trees, so let me show you the composition. As you can see, we have these trees all lined up and we have the nice white moss in the background. And I thought everything looked so open and it was nicely separated among the trees. And we had this nice interesting background with the white moss amongst the rocks there. And I really liked how it looked. And I brought out the camera and started to play around with the composition a little bit. And uh, of course, one of the main things was to work with the trees and make sure that they were nicely separated, which they, which was actually quite easy in this case. Uh, I wanted to show that small little tree there. Let me stop down a little bit so it's easier for you to see. That small little tree there, I wanted to 
include that I thought it was added a bit of interest to the right side but the main interest is of course more towards the middle and the left side up here so I want to work a little bit uh, in post with keeping the direction that way and uh, perhaps making this a little bit less important um, one of the thoughts that I had at first was to uh, have the composition a bit more zoomed in like this uh, but I thought that I lost a little bit too much of uh, the the open nature and the area as a whole that I have here so framing it up more like this uh, gave me more of the a, a complete um, it gave me more of the complete nature of the scene and I wanted to convey that since I thought it was looking really interesting and really good. The One of the things I really want to uh, had to work with I think in post is the sky. It's really not that interesting. If I just stop down for you like this you can see it's just completely blue up there. Uh, so I'm not sure I could uh, thicken the canopy that I have right here. I could try to thicken that but I'm not sure if that is going to work in my favor or not or if I'm just gonna crop the whole thing down and remove it. Could also be interesting but then I'm afraid if I perhaps will lose too much of the interest down there. So this is an image that has nice potential, but I really gotta have to work it in post and see how I really want the composition to turn out. I'm pretty sure that I want to include the bottom part here at least, since it adds a lot of interest in the bottom there. If I just zoom out a little bit more, there you can see the camera. <laughs> um, you can see zooming out more would not have added anything. I don't have anything else here in the foreground that is interesting. so. Starting around here where I do have the interest of the bottom of this tree and the uh, Small little blueberry bushes. I think there are Yeah uh, down at the bottom there and uh, Just having the progression of the trees moving up um, up the hill uh, It gives a nice logical progression through the composition But yeah, as I said I'm gonna have to work it uh, a lot in, in post, I think, to bring it into the way that I want it. Uh, and the same as, as you can see on this side, we have this thicker part of the forest and it acts a little bit as a framing element. And the same is true on that side, so it's framing a lot more and giving a passage, a passage through, through the composition. I think I'm talking a bit too much about the composition, but I really, I find these types, I find these types of compositions a lot more interesting rather than framing up these grand scenes. Since with this type of composition, I'm more working the composition rather than just, oh, look at all these interesting things. These are beautiful areas and have things of interest, but it's not that grand wow factor. So I'm having to work the composition. I really have to think about where do I want to lead the viewer? What things do I want to pro have as a progression? Where do I want the um, viewer to look from here to here to here? Or actually rather, where, how do I want to build the visual flow of the composition? Do I want the viewer, do I want the visual flow to go from this tree then to that? tree and then I want you to move into this and then into that and do I want this element to be included or I want to uh, remove it or I, do I want to do this or that and that <laughs> it becomes much more of a work in progress and much more of something when I actually get something that I'm really happy with I'm more proud of it in a sense because it's much more difficult to get that perfect composition within the woods like this rather than at an open grand scene where it's just 
oh look at the dramatic foreground and then this dramatic sky and then everything is dramatic and it's really easy to look upon. <laughs> That's not the case with woodlands uh, or scenes like these at least. Of course there are other places where you have more dramatic woodlands as well. Big gnarly trees that are just standing out from uh, from the background and everything but here it's the way that I like to frame up scenes like this is to integrate everything into a whole uh, but still having interest and in, yeah I'm not sure I'm I think I'm just kind of babbling on uh, at this point and I hopefully you get something out of it because I working a composition is really the the biggest joy of, of photography for me to, today and the biggest reason for me con to continue photography is the pr continued progression of compositional skill and exploring new locations and a lot of the locations are within the woods so it's natural for me to focus upon that more nowadays than it was earlier where I'm kind of trying to find grand things. The grand things are a bit too obvious, let's say. I still like to photograph them, but often they're too dependent upon light and too dependent upon the conditions that you have and the time of day and everything. Working within the woods like this gives me a lot more reward, a lot more reward for my skill, I would say. So yeah. <laughs> Hopefully this image turned out well and uh, I hope you really liked me talking about this image for a while. So, that's all for me this time. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe in order to stay tuned for more, share this video with someone who would find it useful. Yeah, until next time, goodbye. <laughs>